In this video, I want to talk about another type of panel estimation strategy, which is known as the dummy variables estimator. So in order to talk about this, we're going to talk about our original problem, which is we are interested in the various factors which affect house prices in a city I at time T. And explicitly here, I'm going to say that this I takes on the value of one, two or three. So I'm talking about a panel of three different cities. And as before, we say that the house price in city I at time T depends on the crime rate in that particular city at that particular time. It also depends on the unemployment rate in city I at time T. And finally, we suppose that there are a range of time independent factors which are contained in this alpha I term here, plus some idiosyncratic factors U, I, T. And implicitly in writing this, I'm sort of assuming that we've already controlled for the factors which solely vary over time and don't vary across cities. So perhaps we've included some um, dummy variables for the different time periods, for example. And we've spoken about the problems with estimating this equation via pooled OLS due to the covariance between alpha i and one or more of our independent variables, which means that the estimates are going to be both biased and inconsistent. And I spoke about in passing a strategy which we could use to actually circumvent this. And it's very similar to that which we used for the time dependent factors. And all we do is, is we have our original equation, so beta one times crime IT, plus beta two times unemployment rate in city I at time T. But then what we do is we include dummy variables for each of the cities, or technically for each of or the number of cities minus one, because we don't need to include dummy variables for each of the cities. So then our equation might look something like this. So we have mu one times D two plus mu two times D three, plus finally our idiosyncratic error, UIT. And D2 here is a dummy variable, which takes on a value of one if I equals two, and it takes on a value of zero otherwise. Okay, so this is our new equation for house prices. So how does this particular specification help? Well, the reason it helps is because essentially by including these dummy variables, we are allowing each different city to have a different value of an intercept. In other words, we're allowing each city to have a different value of this unobserved heterogeneity. So by explicitly including these dummy variables, we are explicitly taking account of this unobserved heterogeneity. Technically, in order to allow city one to have an intercept, we should also include a parameter beta naught in here, um, which we would add onto our regression. But for our purposes, I'm just gonna forget about that for now, because essentially it's, it's doing a very similar thing to what we have here anyway. Okay, so what are the properties of this dummy variables estimation of the parameters beta one and beta two? Well, it turns out that dummy variables estimation is consistent under the same criteria which fixed effects estimation is consistent. In other words, the covariance of any of our independent variables, xit, with this idiosyncratic error, uit, has to be equal to zero. So that's a weak exogeneity assumption. We also require that there is no serial correlation of errors. And finally, we require that we have homoscedasticity, so there is no variance in the variance across time, for example, or the variance of this error term across time, rather. And furthermore, not only is it consistent under the same set of criteria as the fixed effects estimator, the estimates which we actually get from dummy variables estimation are exactly equivalent to fixed effects estimation. So the actual estimate, estimates which the, we'll get out from doing this particular regression are identical, and the standard errors of the two types of estimator are equivalent. So fixed effects and dummy variables are just two sides of the same coin. 
So why have I bothered to talk about dummy variables estimator if it's just the same as fixed effects estimators? Well, the reason is that essentially one of the pros of dummy variables estimation is that it explicitly allows us to capture this alpha i, this unobserved heterogeneity for each of the different cities. So we can actually estimate the values of alpha i directly from our estimation, which is different to fixed effects estimation. It turns out, and we're going to discuss it in future videos, that you can estimate alpha i from fixed effects estimators, but it doesn't come out as a default, whereas it does for dummy variables estimation. But one of the major cons with dummy variables estimation is that even though it was fine to include dummy variables for the case where we had three cities, if we have n being large, then it quickly becomes completely ridiculous to contain uh, in our equation dummy variables for each of the different cities. So if, you know, if we've got n of order 1,000 or even just 100, then quickly the dummy variables estimator is going to be completely unwieldy and it's not going to be very neat and perhaps in those circumstances we prefer to use fixed effects.